Hello, welcome to another App Store optimization session with Incipia. Today we're going to go through uh, pulling some good information about how to describe your app and what users care about from reviews. So we'll be looking at both Google Play and the Apple App Store for review information and then showing you just some tactics that you can use to figure out how to better describe your app or position your app relative to your competitors. So we'll be looking from the perspective of a, an app trying to compete in the recipes keyword space. So we'll open up a few tabs with some competitors that come up top for the, the keyword that we care about. And we'll start in Google Play here. And once this page loads, we will look, oh, these are very interesting screenshots. Uh, side tangent, it seems that sometimes screenshots which have really good designs don't always outperform in terms of conversion rate. So that's just one thing to be aware of, that uh, a screenshot that may be designed very, very well with nice visual backgrounds, with um, really nice fonts, oops, contrasting font between the, the big top and the the small continuation here doesn't always perform better. So make sure to always test your hypothesis um, to make sure that the things that you're doing are actually performing well from a conversion rate standpoint. Okay, tangent over. Um, so what we're going to do is look at the most helpful reviews, those that are going to show up first, um, sort of by helpfulness here, because these are the things that people are going to see first when they're looking in the Play Store or the App Store. Um, and this is representative, or we can assume that it is representative of all the users. Another thing here, another small tangent, is that you should definitely always reply to your user reviews, both positive and negative. We wrote a post on this, um, but that's a very important thing, and sometimes you can get users to change their rating to go from a 3 to a 5 star, or to a 1 to a 3, or, or what have you, by responding to the issues that they bring up. So here in looking for details and the user reviews, we're going to look at what are people talking about, what are they mentioning, and Google Play makes it easy to see popular keywords, both in a, the Play Store from a mobile search, um, as well as your Google Play console backend, but we'll just look at the reviews themselves, and what we're seeing is that finding recipes, um, expanding culinary horizons, so we can start to take some notes here. Um, And see what people are describing, and then try to use some of the descript those descriptors in our in our app listing. So people care about finding finding recipes, and please don't judge me for spelling if anything is at issue. And we need we can also include a frequency count to see whether these things pop up more often than not. And we can even use verbatim from users if we find something that is very, very useful and we might want to quote them uh, in our app. The user's language is, again, what people, the words, the descriptors, the information people are using to describe your app, and that's what's going to matter most. Maybe the way that you describe an app is going to be different from the users, and you want to be on the side of the people that are going to be downloading your app. So look to users as the experts. So again, we have So this is a mixed review here. Works very well for finding recipes. So this is a positive thing, and we can even split this out into positive and negative here. If we find something that an app doesn't do well, and especially competitors with negative sentiments, you'll want to comment on those if your app has a competitive advantage in that. Um, so maybe no vetting process for recipes is a negative thing, and if our app has a vetting process, then that can be a positive thing for us to call out. I'm just making a flat table here. Um, so this person likes that, it's, that you can find recipes and it expands your culinary horizons. Oh, it's less helpful in expanding, so that's interesting. That's a negative as well. 
and we see that expanding color rate horizons is something that this user cares about. We could use that as a descriptive um, item in our app. So Charlene, she's talking about helpful when it doesn't crash, when you want to change up dinner once in a while. It's another nice verbatim to use. So crashing, you know, that's something that maybe is not so useful to mention in your app, but new to cooking, maybe my new year's resolution, easy and beautiful design. So design is something that is positive that people care about. Excellent for cooking fans. Offline features is something they care about. Good repository and grocery list creator. Okay, so this person cares about grocery lists. That's something else that you can see. And, and when we start to see repetitions in these things that people care about, those are the things that we want to really want to touch on in our descriptive descriptor. Okay, let's see what other people care about. Love the pictures, but don't like that it switches. Works half the time. So naturally, recipes is something that's popping up a lot. Um, but again, we're looking for other things that we can use as descriptors or to position against this competitor. Okay, so they want an app that works. So it looks like there's not a whole lot of information we can pull here other than the people are doesn't work, cra crashes, permissions, concerns. And I'm grouping these all into one just to show that it's important to write some things down and you can use the, the data later. Um, I'll just say that that's many. All right, healthy foods, okay. So that's something that is positive. Get inspired. Again, we have shopping lists, so that's two. So that's something that we wanna make sure that we're talking about, shopping lists. Search or filter by ingredients, so that's a good thing as well. So they don't like things are from from an external site. So if our app doesn't have this issue, so this kind of goes in with with this. And we can combine these. see that people care about this vetting process and the fact that it's from external websites. So again, you can go through and continuously uh, pull information from this and you'll again want to look for helpfulness or most recent uh, or you can use App Annie or your uh, you can use App Annie to sort by reviews that are positive and see lots of lots of different information. And you can go and do the same thing for other apps here. Okay, ingredients on sale. So you know, just continue continuously write this down until you have um, a bunch of different things that people have mentioned and cared about or care about, and then you can see that which ones are the most most important, which comments, features, uh, use cases are rising to the top of this list that many users care about, and then you want to touch on those in those in your reviews sometimes even using uh, user verbatim, uh, because again, the user's voice is the, the voice of your customers, the, the thing that people are gonna resonate with most, um, sometimes more than your branding description, the, the thing that you come up with uh, from inside of the, the app company. These are all Android. 
So now we can go to oops, uh, iOS here and we do a search of recipes again and then we see all recipe, um, some different apps. Let's go to start with all recipes. And looking at current version is probably going to give you the most up-to-date um, good information unless there are only a few reviews in the current version and then in which case you might go to um, all reviews but make sure to be aware that things may have changed if you're looking at most helpful between the date that it uh, that a review was written and the time that you're looking at so make sure to look at date if you're looking at helpfulness for all reviews or you can search by most recent but the best insight is going to come from current version, most helpful uh, if there are a decent number of reviews. So this review right here is talking about getting rid of space taking books. That's interesting. So you can convert um, upgrade from books to app space. and creates a grocery list. So you see another one and you can, the most important thing is it's not the operating system here, but what the person is talking about. So you probably want to um, in increment the, the root uh, comment from the user rather than add a new line here and say grocery list again. It's talking about grocery lists. If I could scan the recipe, it could read and add it. Um, did not have to type it in. So it looks like that's a feature request. So feature requests, you can create a new column for if if you like. So that's one thing that people care about and that they want. Okay, grocery list. So you can go through the, the ratings here and you know, really pull out the things that people care about most and the positive and the negative sentiments. Um, and you know could spend a lot of time doing this, uh, but the end goal is really to come up with a better description or better captions for your screenshots um, or better onboarding even for your app. You're, you're taking user information, user sentiments and what users care about and distilling it into a better way to describe your app based on what users are saying about other apps out there. Um, because remember that your app is not, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's not just you talking about your app. It's you talking about your app and users considering whether they want to download your app versus all the other apps out there for recipes in this case. So one thing could be that we could take uh, from this process is say that um, could say say this so you could say make you know here what I'm doing is uh, building out a few different variables to a B test you know your first approach uh, even if you have good insight may not be the best approach and so you want to if you have you know, time and you have some uh, ability to run experiments you want to see which approach is best, uh, which voice, which way of describing the thing that users care about uh, is going to perform best. So we could put each one of these as a, a, a feature bullet. Um, and this could be added to our description if we don't have that here. Um, we could also say, 
Oops. <laughs> Again, please don't judge me for misspelling some things here. Of course, before we push anything live, we do a, a full check and a live review. Uh, that, that's actually one thing, small tangent again, that's very important for writing descriptions or doing changes to your app. Read everything aloud. Just sit there and, and read through things out loud with your mouth because you'll probably find in more cases than not that you want to change something or that something is uh, doesn't sound quite right. And that you'll find is going to be much better for finding those improvements than just reading a lot, reading in your head. So easily, easily build grocery lists based on your recipes. Automatically build grocery lists based on recipes. <clears throat> Maybe we want to say saved recipes. And that's one thought that came from reading that aloud. Save time grocery shopping by automatically building lists based on your recipes. You know, read everything aloud before you actually push changes to the App Store or the Play Store to make sure that you're um, catching mistakes or things that you wouldn't otherwise. So another thing is we could start to use some of this verbatim. So our app Pice up, <laughs> not pice up. So here's, here's an example of how you can start to use some of this uh, insight and verbatim uh, in your description. So this could be the opening line right here. And then you could have features. Oh, yeah. So you can start to build your description or optimize your description based on uh, the information here. And here's a, a very brief uh, overview of how you can start to do this and some tactics for that. Um, hope that you enjoyed this little mini session and we'll try to do some more of these um, on a week or bi-weekly basis here. But if you have comments, questions, uh, you have topics that you'd like for future videos, please feel your feel free to request and to send an email to hello at um, Comment or tweet to us or comment on our post on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel and comment in the, the comment section. We love to hear feedback and we reply uh, when you reach out to us and are happy to get into a discussion and conversation about the best way to perform ASO. Because while we have our, our tactics and our methods, um, as any digital marketing effort uh, or anything really in general, there is always a better way to do something. There's always um, more perspective that can be added and uh, with more ideas bouncing around, you get to better and better uh, methods, process, um, ideas. So conversation and discussion is great and we love to hear from you and, and please uh, stay tuned for future videos, posts and, and the like and emails. Thanks for watching.